Hello! Welcome to my stream. My name is Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations. Uh, hello to everyone who he is uh, here. Uh, I'm just going to say a quick hello to Dana, to Jay, to Philip, to Mike, to Steve, to Trina. Thank you very much for joining. Um, and uh, do let me know if there are any problems with the audio or video. Thank you. Um, unlike Steve, Bruce is on time. Yes, I always do my best to be on time. I was very late one time uh, when I'd sort of scheduled everything to go and then I couldn't get anything to work. Uh, but since then, I have um, started practicing the process of getting everything ready to press the go live button well in advance. So, uh, um, and uh, I had a bit of a plan for what I was going to do with today's stream. So that was all... Uh, uh, that was all quite good. So a quick little uh, recap for anyone who's been sort of uh, playing along at home following my streams. Um, I had a Macintosh SE30 here last time, and it was a bit of a funny one because um, I had been given a description by the customer about the fault, uh, and then it, none of that really seemed to match up with what was happening. And then when I actually had a, a, a chat with the customer a little bit later on, it, it was a long time ago that, that SE30 failed, and he was a little bit grey about what the actual problem was. So he, um, um, I, when I told him that ultimately the only thing I could find actually wrong with it was a failed hard drive and a dead speaker... He said, oh, that, yeah, that may well be the case. I know it stopped working and then I stopped using it, but I couldn't remember exactly what happened. So whereas I was sort of hunting out for, um, and he had no, he was totally unaware of the fact that it had already been recapped. So um, I gave that board a clean. The recapping didn't really need to be done, redone. It was a good enough job to leave it as it was. Um, and I recapped the power supply board, a bit of future proofing there. Didn't really see any leakage in the caps. Uh, and then obviously uh, the speaker I'm going to replace. I made mention of some replacement speakers because this is the original speaker. It is a little 0.25 watt 63 ohm speaker, a rather unusual sort of a size, 63 ohms. Like, can we? I don't think. I think I've got the focus set on uh, on manual, so that's not going to focus no matter what I do. So this is a little 63 ohm speaker. This is what you find. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, in the 128K, 512K Plus SE, SE30, Classic, Classic 2, they've all got this 63-ohm speaker. And I have not been able to find a replacement, a new replacement of a 63-ohm speaker. The closest I've been able to find is this little guy here, Visiton, something like that. Um, and it is a 50-ohm speaker. And as you can see, it's quite a bit smaller than the original. Um, but smaller is kind of better than bigger because I can just basically put it onto the same spot on wherever it happens to live on the particular computer. And, um, uh, and then I can just stick it on with a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place. So, uh, I'm going to be replacing, I asked the customer what he wanted to do. Did he want me to put on this one, which is a, uh, an old one that works, or did he want a new one that doesn't match the original, you know, uh, and of course it's inside the case, so you're not really going to see it, and he wanted to go with a new, which is great, now even though this is a smaller speaker, they're actually quite a good quality, they sound pretty good, so uh, so I will be uh, replacing that, I won't be doing that in this uh, in, that, in this live stream, that is kind of dull, but anyhow, that's, so that's, that's just following up on the, uh, the earlier stream, so that one there, Recap the power supply, but ultimately the only thing really wrong with that was a failed hard drive, and he has a replacement for that, and um, a uh, uh, a dead speaker. So anyhow, that's that in itself is uh, is quite a good one. Now this is a this is another one. Now I um, I did a nice little sort of clickbait uh, name for this stream to try and get people. Uh, to see if there's going to be a bit of aggro here, you know, with me going, oh, look at the rubbish job this person did, which, of course, is just not the way I do things. Um, I um, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the fact that this has already been recapped. I'm just going to give you a quick little description of... I'm just going to bring up the job ticket and let you know what this customer said about this particular computer. Uh, here we go. All right, so this is a Macintosh Color Classic. Uh, it is, oh, it's the, it's because my, I've got a color classic, but it's actually called a performer 250, but this one is actually called a color classic. And as you can see with the 
English spelling, not American English spelling, with a, an extra little U in there. Makes all the difference. These ones with the extra U perform way better. Um, so the description here was that uh, boots up sometimes, but has no sound. Um, so the, the you know sometimes boots, sometimes it doesn't. Slight distortion on the monitor. Um, it doesn't always boot when pressing the on button. Uh, sound stopped working shortly after recap. Faint line is visible across the monitor when on. Uh, smelt a burning smell after recapping, and that went away. Um, doesn't always boot off. It's got a SCSI 2SD, and it doesn't always boot off the SCSI 2SD. Missing drive icon. Uh, okay, so what we've got a couple of things here that could potentially be wrong with this one. Um, and... Uh, Let's just have a look. I'm just going to have a quick look in the streaming because I've been rat prattling on for a while. Uh, uh, Steve, thank you for watching the advertisement. I appreciate it when people watch the advertisements because although I cannot say to people, watch the advertisements, you're not allowed to do that. Um, I can, of course, thank people for watching them. Um, right. Uh, Fancy spelling yarn. And what program do you use for your jobs? I've, I'm my own thing. <laughs> it's, I've, it's something that I've put together myself. I'm a web developer, so uh, I had a look at uh, all of the things that did what I wanted w w cost cost dollars, not freebies. The freebies didn't do what I wanted, so I've kind of got my own thing set up. Um, okay, so Scarlet Swordfish, hello and welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining. Um, <clears throat> all right, so... Uh, what I normally do when I'm working on these things, I tend to just sort of have at them. I tend to just go in and recap them and do that. But I'm actually going to fire this one up before recapping it. Um, and that's because I really want to see the distortion that he's talking about. I want to see the distortion and I want to see the line. Oh, God, I hope I've got a keyboard here. Yeah, I do. It is the grubbiest keyboard on the planet, but it is here. Okay, so... Oh, do I have a mouse? See, I... Just sit, sitting there talking about how well prepared I am, and then I didn't bring a keyboard. One forgets that these need the keyboard to turn on. Um, so I've got the uh, I've got the board in. Um, I'm going to fire this up and see what happens. Plug him in. Okay. Um, yes, file maker. Um, it's free if you know where to look. Yeah, let's just say, theoretically, it's not free. It is actually a commercial product, but I think you can probably get hold of some old versions of it. I'm certainly not going to condone people uh, not paying for software because, um, you know, that makes it more expensive for everyone else. Um, but, yeah, there are probably some old versions you can get. And one of the things, great things about FileMaker is, it's essentially a database application, but you can go in and do some really amazing stuff in terms of creating layouts and all that sort of stuff. It's very nifty. I might even do that, you know. Anyhow, um, so just grabbing a keyboard. You're going to laugh when you see this keyboard. Yeah. Do you think it needs cleaning? All right. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's just plug this in and see if we can power it on. Oh, I really should get a mouse, shouldn't I? Have I got one here? I usually have it. Ah, right, <laughs> right here. Uh, hello, Mousy. Come on. It's all tangled up in my tools here. All right. So this is one of these stupid keyboards that has this sort of thing in the middle. You plug the mouse into the middle of it here. This is like... I don't like this keyboard. Okay. Right. So, um, one of the CRT is just the standard CRT Trinitron line. I don't think these ones had the Trinitron line because they're so small. The Trinitron line was generally only on those quite large monitors. Um, okay. All right. Well, we got the Degor sound. So let's uh, just switch them on and see what we get. Ooh, jeez, that made a that made a noise and a half. <laughs> <It went pfft. laughs> okay, so no chime, obviously, but it did sound like it started up. I've got no green light on the front panel. That's that's unusual. 
Uh, we've got some... It, this is absolutely um, unflickery over here, so... Uh, um, I thought mine had one in the middle because I'm so close to looking at my... Sorry. Okay, all right. You got me. You got me. If this is a prank, you're winning. Um, put him... Oh, God, that sounds terrible. Oh, I see it. Very faint line running across there. You know what? That may well be a Trinitron line. Oh, God, this sounds bad. It's it's just kind of... it's. I'm not sure if you can hear it. The speaker's over on that side. You might be getting some of it. But it's just making this constant farty sound. Oh, no. Light came off for a second. I think we can go as far as to say that this is not well. I don't see the distortion. Is anyone else seeing the distortion? And maybe a slight amount of hourglass here, but... You know what? I mean, there are adjustments for the hourglass, but I don't think you get it that much better than we see there. Well, it is a really faint line. I'll have to have a look at mine and see if mine has a line in the same spot. But it's just running right along here. Um, it's obviously not booting. Um, uh, oh, hello, Mike. Welcome to the stream. Um, okay, so, uh, this is other mic, as in not the other mic, more than one mic on the stream at the moment. Um, all right, so, I have kind of seen enough at this stage, I mean, I mean, I, I might just try and, okay, we've got the green light when I did a restart that time. I'm just pressing the restart at the moment to see if I can actually get it to boot up. Uh, I mean, I've seen this before. I've seen this where you start up and you just get a white screen that doesn't go anywhere. Uh, you get no mouse cursor or anything like that. And it's to do with the sound chip, uh, problems with the sound chip. And given the fact this has no sound, that's you know not really that surprising. Um, all right, well, I'm, not, I'm really not getting to see much here. So um, it needs recapping, obviously. Um, and we'll just go in and see if we can provide it with a little bit of TLC and maybe coax it into starting up again. Um, right. So let's move the grubby keyboard. Oh my goodness. I put the keyboard on my pants and now my pants are grubby as well. All right. Those who are not familiar with these cute little machines, uh, removing the uh, logic board. It's pretty easy. You've got these little bendy tabs here that you pull down and pull out. Oh, God, be careful. Got their brittle plastic. That comes out. Yay. Uh, we put that on the pile. And then we can just slide this sucker out. Now, unlike the later slide-out boards, there are these little... I'll get to them in a minute. Let me put this away. So get ready for the old man noises. Oh, <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's fun. Right, so um, we've got a little Farallon Ethernet card here, which I'm going to remove. Let's just zoom in a little bit, shall we? Shall we? Uh, zooming into a completely different part of the desk to where I am. So I better move the camera down a little bit because otherwise it's a bit tedious. There we go. That's a little bit better. So, still dealing with slight colour hue issues with this camera, unfortunately. It's either green or it's red. I've been trying different experiments with the uh, white balance and whatnot, but anyhow. Um, I've got my little clip on magnifying glasses here today, not like when I was doing the power supply the other day, driving myself mad because I couldn't see what I was doing. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, there's a line in the middle of the screen. Okay, yeah, right, nice. Little line right across the bottom quarter of the screen. Yeah, okay. Um, sad Mac or an arrow. That's right. The fact that it's not even getting an arrow, um, you know, tells tells us a lot. Um, right. Um, so, Farallon Ethernet card on this one. So we're going to just whip that off. Um, what I've generally found with these, if you're going to lift them up, don't try and lift them up from this side or this side. 
grab them here and wiggle them up like that just from center up because they do you can end up break snapping the uh, the sides of these off if you bend it up that way so um farallon farallon ethernet card i've actually got a, a few of these um you know for all of my different lc style computers so what i was saying before what i don't like about this compared to the um uh the later ones is that these little grounding clippy things that go into here they're not soldered on they come out all the time when you pull them out they go ping and i mean this is missing one um now i don't i need to double check and make sure that that's just not floating around in the case or something like that but i just it really bothers me that these things come off so easy um uh in the later boards they were sold on okay so let's just have a quick look at this for a moment um one thing of interest is this does have the uh floating point unit installed i talked about this the other day with the fact that this has got an empty socket for putting a math code processor in it a 68882 um floating point unit um this is a plcc chip sitting in that socket and this is the tool i mentioned this the other day but this is the tool for removing them it's kind of weird, isn't it? But anyhow, you uh, you poke these little these little guys down into those little holes there, and then you squeeze it together like that, and then generally you just punk it out like that, and it comes out nice and easy. You don't do any damage to the pins, and so that's all great. Now let's grab a little Ziploc bag. Uh, let's grab a little Ziploc bag. Uh, here we are. Here's my Ziploc bags, and this is where I put all the bits and pieces of my customers' boards so that they don't get lost. In goes a little floating point unit. In goes the battery cover. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, what do floating point units do? Um, Anyone who's ever done any sort of uh, uh, database work will know that there is a particular type of, um, uh, what is it, sort of uh, field setup that you can create for a field in a database called a float. You've got an integer and a float. And a float is a number that is much larger than an integer. So an integer is just, you know, sort of, I can't even remember exactly how big they can be. But an integer can't be any larger than a certain number. And if it's any larger than that, it becomes a float and it's, however many bits to store a float number. A floating point unit is designed specifically to calculate those larger numbers, those floats, you know, numbers with uh, decimal places in them and, you know, great big long numbers. Um, it will only be of value to you if you are doing processing that requires lots of calculations of floating numbers. So, or float numbers. So, um, you know, um, that's what it does. I mean, whether you use it or not, I hate the idea of having an empty socket on a computer. I, I just can't stand it. It's a little bit like when you, you know, you're buying a car and you don't buy the deluxe model, you buy the basic model, and it has all these little spots on the dash where there would have been buttons if you'd have bought the flash one. And I just that that frustrates me. I mean, I you know, I, <laughs> I like to have if there's an empty socket, I want something in it. <laughs> that would have been there. Okay, got some RAM here. There's no VRAM installed on this one, so I don't need to worry about that. Um, so I've got all the little bits and pieces taken out. Now, there are a few things we need to talk about with this one. This has been recapped by the customer. Now, this, as I've said many times in my live streams, I my, this stream is not about kind of bashing people for uh, doing a, a, a job that, you know, doesn't meet my standard or something like that. That's not what I'm about. It's never been what I'm about. Um, I'm about encouraging people to do thing, things themselves, try and teach them, you know, methods and processes, being able to do this stuff themselves, and at the same time, try and provide some entertainment while I'm going. Um, and this is someone who has had a go. And, you know, to, at the end of the day, there's really nothing particularly wrong with this in terms of the soldering job and stuff like that. But what I do want to do is I want to talk about what they've done here in terms of putting um, through-hole radial capacitors in place of surface mount capacitors. Now, you look at this and you think, oh my goodness, you know, why would someone do this? The, um, the answer to that is actually really, really simple. Um, here in Australia, uh, if you were looking to buy electronic components, one of the places you would almost definitely end up at in terms of a retail store would be JCAR. 
J Car Electronics. Um, I love the place. It's I've, I've got one just up the road from me, and they're absolutely fantastic. It's where I buy things like my wick, my solder wick, and it's where I bought this solder sucker. And you know, I mean, they're all sorts of things that they sell. It's fantastic. They sell wires. They sell resistors. They sell capacitors. Though you know, so they got all sorts of components and stuff there. However, if you go in there to buy something like a capacitor, let's say you go in there and you say, "I want a forty-seven microfarad, sixteen volt capacitor," they really don't have much in the way of surface mount components. They have some, but they don't have that much. If you wanted a 47 microfarad, 16 uh, volt capacitor, you are going to end up walking out with one like this. A little through-hole electrolytic capacitor like that. Um, and a lot of people don't even necessarily know of some of the you know larger suppliers out there that are going to be selling surf and mount, mount stuff. And more importantly, um, if, um, the, if you jump onto something like a, a DigiKey, a mouse or a RS component, something like that, and you do a search for 47 microfarad 16 volt uh, capacitor, you're likely to end up with like uh, a thousand results. And for someone who's relatively new to this, that can be a little bit daunting. It's like, well, look at all these, which one am I supposed to pick? So you go into a JCAR electronics store, you say, I want a 47 microfarad 16 volt capacitor. You only got one choice and it's going to be these. I actually recognize the brand of these. I know these are actually from JCAR. This is obviously an Australian board. So someone here has actually gone into a JCAR and bought these capacitors. Now, that's fine. You can actually go in and recap these using these through hole capacitors. I don't recommend it, but you can go in and do it. And you can often end up with a computer that works fine. Um, where I, I really see the biggest problem is the fact that you look how high they are. You look at where they actually sit on the board and you see how easy it would be to, um, you know, sort of bump one of these and tear off a pad in the process. You know, if you get that, give that a good nudge, that's likely to just tear the pad off. It's providing way too much kind of, um, you know, height on that so that you can then, you could then sort of just knock that, uh, knock that pad right off. So this is really the main reason why I would say don't use them. Plenty of people have recapped their boards with through hole capacitors and they've worked and they don't look too crash hot. And of course with this one here, these capacitors here, they're having to be kind of bent over so that we can stick the network card on there because there's sort of no space. So, you know, as I say, I'm not really not here to kind of pay out someone or give someone, you know, criticism for recapping like this, but I'm just, you know, it, it's, I think it's a fairly unsafe way of doing it. And I definitely am going to undo it and uh, replace them with um, uh, replace them with surface mount uh, capacitors. Uh, any questions? Um, oh, Jay, thank you for actually paying attention now. Um, uh, for most things, they're useless, but if you are having a lot of them, yeah, okay. Uh, cool, uh, just like <laughs> oh, burn. Um, so a few of them with non SMDs, ask him how they work. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I've seen a couple, um, that, uh, Steve have done, has d done with the, uh, through hole capacitors. Uh, what's your success rate like, Steve? Jump on and let us know. So, uh, um, right way according to the title. Yes. No criticism, but this is the right way according to the title. What I'm about to do will be the right way. Yeah, as I said, I mean, I just basically put that in the title to try and get people to click on it and see if there was going to be a bit of aggro about it. Pfft, sorry, sorry to disappoint. <laughs> um, those ones around the PDS slot look look like a huge issue. Yeah, you're right. And in actual fact, as I've talked about before, this is the sound chip here, um, and this is still covered in grime. So uh, you know that's going to be an issue. So. I haven't bothered to go in and check the polarity um, or the the measurements of the caps to make sure they're the right ones. I haven't done that. I mean, I might be able to find one that's been done wrong and say, oh, there's your problem. But I'm just going to take them off and do them again. So uh, <laughs> they were so successful. Okay, so it didn't work out too well for Steve. However, it has worked out for some people. So, um, all right, well, let's, um, let's just start off by having a little bit of a look because I do want to show off uh, some of the... Um, you know, some of the, the known areas of issue um, on these boards. So, um, oh, well, 
there's kind of number one <laughs> in terms of uh, uh, issues with these, the the um, uh, through hole capacitors. This one here, through sort of movement and bending, has actually completely come undone from that pad. So you know, there's a very good reason to not use them right there for you. Um, we can see quite a bit of um, the gunk, or as I like to say, scunge um, around here. Or is this gunge? I can't remember. Can someone clarify? Can remi they remind me the uh, the difference between scunge and gunge? Um, uh, I think I think scunge is dry. I think remembering scunge is dry and gunge is is wet. I think something like that so um, so obviously these have to come off they have to be cleaned this is going to have to be ultrasonically cleaned to clean all that up we've got a few ugly looking traces around here but they look like they're still carrying tricity um, we've got down here or oh, that yeah 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 I mean I can tell you these pads really don't look like they were cleaned properly before putting them on but um, you know, cleaning pads is kind of a bit on the tricky side. So, you know, again, no real criticism there. Um, all right, well, let's whip these fellas off, shall we? Uh, okay, gunge is liquid, scunge is dry. That's what I thought. That's how I remembered it. So that's good. Um, actually, the Quadra 610 was okay after I found the issue of a corroded pad. Well, there you go. So there you go. Um... All right, so let me just have a quick look on here. I just want to see. I've got 16 viewers at the moment. I want to just say uh, hello to all those 16 people. If you are new to this stream, if you have never watched one of my streams before, please jump on and say hello in the chat. I always like to say hello to new folks. Um, right, okay. So um, how am I going to take these off? Probably with hot air will be the quickest. I don't think it'll take much coaxing to get the... Uh, Get these off because I've got a nice clear view of uh, you know I've got nice clear access to this solder because the there's no surface mount component there so um, now I'm using uh, as usual I'm using my uh, hello micro maze repair um, I don't recall you being on these before so um, okay so here we have uh, my little heat sink not heat sink, heat shield thing, which is just basically a blade from a little cutter like this, one of these clickety clickety cut cutters. You can just snap these into whatever length you want. They're steel, so I can just place that in between there so that we don't melt this uh, lovely little plastic, um, uh, what do you call that, connector. All right, so grab my trusty tweezers. Uh, I'm not sh even sure that microscope's the best way to go for this one. We'll just see if I telephoto you over in here um, uh, which way am I going that way there we go let's just move this out of the way there we go put that get a little bit of light overhead I think that'll be better for components of this size I think if we do this with uh, uh, the microscope you won't be able to see much at all all right so let's get some hot air onto this shall we I'm pumping out at the moment uh, heating up, heating up, heating up. I think it's about 420 degrees Celsius and blowing out 120 air, whatever 120 means. The scale on this thing. I've got a sneaking suspicion the uh, heating element of this uh, um, uh, hot air station is starting to peter out. So I may have to look at getting a replacement soon. Melting solder. Melting. Oh, that's that was one of the easiest re cat removal things I've ever done in my life. Um, okay, Ouch. don't do what I just did. <laughs> now I'm going to just provide a little bit of a heat shield around this one here. That way. That way. There we go. It's all. All, uh, up, up and about facing everything. So I'm going to just put a little heat shield. And, uh, I'm going to have to use my little spring trick to make this stand up. Get my little spring here, clip it onto my heat shield and rest it on the board there. And I don't want to melt the socket either. So I'm going to put that there. She 
comes. Uh, where are we? Around here. I will say that the uh, the person who did the recapping on this before, they did a very good job of not melting any plastic. Um, I assume they have followed some of my instructions to uh, ensure that you don't melt plastic. Uh, I'm just going to put this here. And where are we there? I do a terrible job of getting this lined up. There we go. You can see it. Uh, what makes you think it is petering out? Um, it just doesn't feel like it's getting as hot as it used to. Uh, Dan, has he tried to power this machine up? He has. He sure has. Um, and... Uh, we got no chime, uh, we got grey screen, we didn't get cursor, we didn't get flashing question mark or anything like that, and the power switch didn't switch on the first time, but it did when I pressed the restart, and you know, sort of a hard restart, so, um, or is it a soft restart? Anyhow, did it on the keyboard, um, so, uh, yeah, and this is pretty much fits what the customer said about the board, and they said that it does work sometimes and doesn't work other times. Um, so this was one of the other times, uh, let's see if we can get a little heat shrink in here. We've got lots of little plastic things around there. There we go. This camera view is actually quite good for these. I feel people might disagree, but uh, as much as I like using the microscope, it's great for the surface mount, you know, the really close-up surface mount components, but when you've got these ones sticking up off the board like this, this one works quite well. Nice big lump of solder there. Tweezers. Tweezers. Just a quick little reminder to anyone who is watching, if you're planning to do any of this stuff yourself, if you want to know anything about the tools I use, Pretty much everything is in the description. And look in the description, you'll find links to where you can buy these things on Amazon. Um, and you will also, for, also find a link to a recapping guide for a color classic. Um, if you need any help, this is not it. This is a very old version of it. Um, I have updated the, uh, the one that's on the uh, website so that it's much prettier. Um, but this one's good enough for me. For this. I'm not on camera, am I? I don't get carried away. Where is it? There. There. Da -da -da. There it is. That came off nice and easy. Right, so that's all of the uh, through-hole radial capacitors removed. If anyone hears anything unusual, one of my chickens is making a bit of noise at the moment, so uh, that's what that unusual sound is. Uh, okay, let's uh, now zoom out a little bit. All right, let me just have a little quick chat, catch up on the chat. Uh, okay, be right back. I'm making a strawberry banana milkshake. So Dana's off doing stuff. That's good, because that's what the name says. Dana does stuff. And now he's doing stuff. He's making a milkshake. There we go. Um, right, okay. So 11 a.m. here at the moment in Australia. Uh, not a bad looking day. Not one of the best, but all right. All right, so the next step is to clean these pads. It's a process that I go through all the time and one of the most important steps in this process because uh, you need clean pads if you want to get good solder adhesion. So uh, don't skimp out on the cleaning. Always do the cleaning. And someone please tell my chickens to shut up. Shush. Shush. 
Josh. Josh. Something's got its uh, attention. Usually when they make a big noise like that, it's because there's some sort of predator around, like a cat or a, a bird of prey or something like that. Okay. So, on with a little bit of flux. Once again, links in the description for where you get this flux. It is Antec flux. It's nice flux. I like this flux. Then I'm going to grab some solder or solder, depending on where in the world you are. And put some fresh solder onto these. And what we are aiming for is to end up with something that looks beautiful and shiny and new. These are, these actually have been cleaned. They they're actually coming up uh, quite quite well. So um, you know, me having a whinge about um, them not being cleaned properly. I think they were actually cleaned. They just got gravied up by the solder on top of them. Just make sure I'm all in focus there. Then once I have put that nice new solder on and given a little bit of a wiggle around to uh, clean the pad, the next step is, of course, to get the solder off until we've just left a nice flat tinned pad already for the new component. And where have I put my clippers? Where have I put? I've got these ones will do. These ones will do. It's not the ones I'm looking at. Oh, here they are. Found them. I didn't put the network card in the Ziploc bag. Gotta keep my rules. <laughs> shut it! Come on, check and shut it! Um, right. Oopsie. Nine PM here. Well, I hope, uh, this is, uh, you know, a, that wherever you happen to be at the moment, uh, that this is something to provide some entertainment for you. Uh, I guess it would be 9pm in the Friday evening. So I guess there are worse things to do on a Friday evening than sit and watch someone recap. Um, always like to try and be reasonably careful around here with the serial number. I try not to uh, melt serial numbers when I'm doing this stuff. Okay. Giving a gentle wipe here, taking off the old solder, and as you can see, leaving behind a beautiful, beautiful, shiny uh, pad already for a new component to go on. Doing the same with this one. Oh, it's delicious. Okay. You can see there's little bits of black stuff there that I'm just sort of gently scraping off with the... Uh, with the solder wick, I better turn my fan on because I'm just getting facefuls of uh, smoke here at the moment, which is not good for your health. Um, there we go. Get a bit of a cross breeze going on now. And then, uh, yeah, so you can see they've got this little black stuff here. If I just keep gently rubbing with this wick, I take that black stuff off. Um, I'm going to um, take off this bit of uh, uh, mask here, solder mask or whatever you want to call it, this green mask, because I can see that there's a little bit of blackening underneath it, which means the copper has been exposed to air and it is blackening. And so I, I need to take that coating off, clean up the copper and then tin it, getting, uh, getting some solder on it to help protect it for the future. Generally, these ones here, these this trace here, this big fat trace here, it's kind of, it's in the firing line. It gets all that leakage and everything, but I've never found an issue with a uh, color classic that was related to a problem with this particular trace. The problems almost definitely almost always occur in here, in the, uh, that sound chip, which is on the left there. Oh, great way to spend a Friday evening. That's what I like to hear. I hope those people who uh, like to do so, uh, have a drink in their hand. It's a little bit early for me here. Um, <clears throat> unless it's a breakfast beer. But of course in lockdown, who knows what time you're supposed to start drinking, eh? Oh, look, we've got a little bit of insect in there. little wing. I'm um, just having a little look around. I mean, look at that. Look at that sconge. Look at it. Look at it. Yeah, and there's, oh, there's a little bit of blackening. I'm just going to have a, a little peek around here. Oh, shush, sure. 
Oops, this has still got that scunge from the last time. It's more gunge, that one actually had that flux in it. Yeah, look at that blackening. You saw that? I'm wondering whether it may not be beneficial to remove this chip and do a bit of cleaning. Got some blackening here as well. Sound chip 343S0129. If anyone has a big stash of these somewhere, please send them to me. Could never have enough of these things. Um, okay, Dana, welcome to the stream. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, no, you didn't nearly miss everything. I'll give you a very quick recap. Because you're one of the regulars, I'll give you a recap. Uh, this is a client's um, uh, color classic. Uh, very, very dear to them, as they when they dropped it off, they did actually say, this is my baby. People who have Color Classics love their Color Classics, and I'm not going to criticise. I love mine as well. It's a great little computer, but they're, people really do like them. Uh, it works sometimes, doesn't work other times. They recapped it themselves. They used um, through-hole radial capacitors, and I am removing them to replace them with surface mount ones. I have discussed why using through-hole radials is not a good idea. You can recap a computer. You can get a computer working with those, but it's you know generally not a good idea. And of course, this one here, as we can fairly clearly see here, hasn't been cleaned. But they said even when this does work, they don't get any sound from it. And of course, that's a very familiar thing to hear with the old uh, Color Classic because the capacitors are right near this sound chip. Uh... This is exactly what I did with my CC. When you say exactly what you did, do you mean put through hole capacitors on them? Like these, these little guys? Right, let's have a look. What have we got here? We've got suntan. Bit of a suntan cap. Yeah. I have no idea what the general quality of suntan is. It's the brand that JCAR here in Australia do sell. And I can tell you, at least on the bright side, it is a 105 degree rated capacitor rather than an 85. But, yeah. Is this also a suntan? This one's different. This one's different. This is also a suntan. 10 microfarad, 16 volt. Ah, uh, so. So, let's get rid of... Let's continue with our cleaning so that we can then put some nicer capacitors onto it. Happy capacitors. Uh, get my flux. Got a nice new tube of flux here at the moment. Fills my heart with joy. Ba -ba -ba. Let's get some cups of I view it that way. It'd be a little bit easier. There we go. Easier for me to work on. Solder, solder, solder. Very, very gentle when I'm doing this stuff. Applying very little pressure. Don't want to um, uh, don't want to tear off a pad. Got a little nick in here. I just want to see that there's copper there. Yep, we're all fine. Always check. Just like to check. Then we get our solder wick. Our solder John wick. And wiggity whack. And we get rid of that solder. Solder on, solder off. And revealing the beauty of the pad underneath it. Sometimes when I'm doing this, I just I manage to get the soldering iron in the right position, just moves the wick around exactly where I want, and then other times, like at the moment. I just can't seem to get the wick to do what I want it to do. There we go. Shiny. Yes, I mean, the whole thing with the uh, using the correct ones, as I mentioned at the beginning, certainly here in Australia, 
Um, you can basically just walk into a real retail shop here and grab uh, through hole capacitors. If you are wanting uh, surface mount ones, you've got to kind of go online to a very to a very kind of a more specialised provider and grab um, you know grab the surface mount caps from them. Um, and for a lot of people, particularly if they're just starting, it's sort of like you don't even necessarily know about the existence of you know some of these other providers and you know so you say oh, okay where do i go for electronic components people say oh you go to jcar they walk in then they walk out with these so you know can't blame them um i don't like the look of that it might be nothing but you see that blackness between that pad and the trace i just want to be sure that there's copper arm in there because i have seen these ones break uh, in places like that before. Actually, you know what I should do? I should use a multimeter on beepity beep mode. Beepity beep. Beep. All right. All right. Let's just check. And I'll put that one there. Whoopsie. There. And there. Come on. Yeah, we're good. Just like to be sure. We're good. <coughs> Focus. All right. So, how's everyone doing? Talk to me. Anything interesting going on in people's lives at the moment? Uh, this is the little cap, this one. Get a little bit of uh, solder on here. Anyone working on any interesting projects at the moment? Uh, vintage computer related? GT, welcome to the stream. Hello, close to finishing my video script. I, I cannot wait for this video. Um, we've got scripts. Is this the one we got the thumbnail for as well? Can't wait to see the video. Typing it up as I watch it. So I, hope, I hope that I'm not distracting you too much from that, Jay. Been here for 15 minutes. Sorry. <laughs> I do miss it sometimes. I see now. I see up in the top of the screen there. I see a uh, sup. Um, so uh, my apologies for uh, missing that. I do miss it every now and again. As I do say, if people jump on and say hello and I don't reply, it is not personal. It's just that I get distracted doing this stuff and I do sometimes miss some of the comments on the chat. So never be afraid to go in and say stuff a second time. Um Okay, uh, it took me something like 16 hours total and posted. Absolutely not worth it, but you know, it's the process. I look forward to seeing that one. Um, hmm, Nano Berry Shake. Uh, kind of classic o cap sitting next to me, being cute and awesome. I've said, as what I said at the beginning of the stream, I mean, uh, although the, the Color Classic cops a fair bit of criticism about it being underpowered and uh impractical and all that sort of stuff color classic users they do love them um they you know people are really really do like their color classics so i've got to anytime i work on these i've got to treat them with the utmost respect um Uh, I'm banned from Macaque. Fair enough. I had it coming. Um, so, uh, is that a little nudge for me to talk about Macaque in this stream? I suspect, I suspect that everyone watching this stream actually knows of Macaque. Um, just on the off chance that they don't. It's our little show that we have uh, once a week. A little group of Mac enthusiasts talk about all things... Um, Apple and Mac, we talk about software, hardware, culture, we yak away, and it's on every Thursday night, uh, Eastern Time, 
It's actually Friday morning here, but the uh, following morning, Friday, Thursday night in the US, Friday morning here in Australia. Uh, um, now, what did I want to mention? Um, what did I want to mention? Uh, oh, Oz Retrocomp. Hello. Welcome to the stream. Thank you very much for joining. Um, we're looking at a color classic here today, uh, recapped by the customer. Uh, not a particularly bad job done, but at the end of the day, the uh, they're using through-hole capacitors, which I really don't like because they hang up off the board and they're too easy to damage. And, of course, the other thing is that it didn't work after the recap. Well, I mean, it worked, but it's intermittent. Um, and it has no sound. And I'm seeing a few of these sort of ugly traces going on here. Which we don't like. I uh, have recently uh, pulled my uh, G5... My old G5 tower that I bought in 2003, uh, which is a dual core 2 gigahertz, no, sorry, dual processor 2 gigahertz, and um, I pulled that out of storage and I now have that permanently set up next to my Mac Pro, and I am, uh, uh, and I sort of use uh, sort of remote access e type thing, you know, screen sharing. To uh, to talk to it, I have just recently set it up as a dual boot, so that I've got ten point five there for doing <clears throat> more stuff with, more modern stuff with, and I have ten point four installed so that I can fire up um, OS nine classic, and I've been going through some of my old OS nine backup disks and stuff like that, and finding all sorts of cool stuff there. Got quite a bit more to do. I'm looking forward to that. Um, just going through and looking at all these old apps that I used to use and old utilities and old, uh, you know, old projects I worked on and all that. So it's a, a nice bit of nostalgic fun playing with the old G5. And it's, of course, worth mentioning that when you run a G5 using... I've got a, um, an SSD in it. When you run a G5 using period correct software, oh, my goodness, that thing flies. Absolutely flies. When you consider they came out, or my one came out originally with 10.2, um, you know, it still really, really flies with 10.4 on it. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, I'm not a okay with Color Classics, but wouldn't they have Surface Mount Capacitors? Well, they should have. Or oh, they should have. Yes, if you get a chance, um, uh, Oz Retro Comp, jump back and have a look at the... Uh, um, at the beginning of the uh, of the stream, as I just give a little bit of an intro into this computer, and uh, and the fact that this was recapped by the customer, and they used uh, through hole um, radial electrolytic capacitors, and I basically spent a little bit of time talking about the problems associated with doing that. Um, and that's the reason why I'm going in and doing it all again. Yep, flies with period correct software. We always have to remember that. I mean, you know, you take something like a Macintosh 2CI. Now, of course, we're talking about an old computer. Yeah, having said that, it's still got a faster processor than this one. I think it's twenty megahertz, um, six eight zero three zero. But anyhow, you know, the, when you look at the old uh, Macintosh two CI, which originally came with System six, so you know, you're thinking about like System seven, how old that is. I mean, it, you know, the two CI ran on System six, and I tell you what, under System six, the two CI used to fly. It was so quick. Um, I think I've only got one more left to clean. There we go. Uh, just worth mentioning that this is sort of um, an area where you can often get trouble with these color classics around the crystal here, this little crystal oscillator. Um, which is, I think around the real-time clock and stuff and around this chip here. Again, we got all this scunge in here from the, uh, 
uh, from the uh, the leaky electrolytic. I mean, there's lots and lots of evidence of leakage on this one. And to be honest, if you look at this and you think of the recapping job that was done with these through-hole capacitors, and I, you know, I mentioned that that's probably not the best way to do it. Really, the the biggest issue with this board is the lack of cleaning. Uh, now, it's not not everyone has an ultrasonic cleaner at their disposal. Um, you know, they might might be doing it another way. They might be dousing it in or soaking it in a bit of um, isopropyl or some distilled water or something like that, and then maybe you know giving it a go with a toothbrush. But uh, uh, this one really does need cleaning. I don't like the look of the solder that was used either. It's kind of grainy. I don't know. Weird. Um, yeah. See how it sort of doesn't sheen when it dries? That's kind of weird. See, if I take that solder off and then I use my own solder, and I'm just going to do a little mound onto this one. Mound. You see when it dries... It's all nice and shiny like that, whereas the other one was all quite grainy, the, the solder that was on it. So, yeah, who knows? I mean, maybe not particularly good solder used. Oh, let's have a quick look here. Um, System 6 rules. Hello, JDW. Welcome to the stream. Um, I still haven't had a chance uh, to watch your... Uh, stream about recapping a 400k floppy drive. It's interesting because I've got a 400k floppy drive here that needs recapping. I've got all the caps, all those teeny weeny little uh, uh, through hole radial caps to go in and replace it. I just haven't gone in and done it yet. So uh, I'll be very interested to watch that. So thank you for posting that. I've had a few people say very good things about that video. So anyone here who might be interested in recapping a 400k floppy drive, do jump on and have a look at JDW's channel. Um, the, uh, for, uh, obviously the, for anyone who's not really familiar with the 400k floppy drive that was in the, uh, things like the 128k and the 512k and was also available as an external, uh, they're twice the height of the 800k and, you know, 1.4 megabyte drives, you know, they're you know, really thick and they've got a very, very different mecha mechanism, a great big sort of clunky metal mechanism. And they seize up. They, uh, the age they are now, the grease that gets on them just makes them completely and totally seize up. And so I've got one down here. It's been cleaned and lubricated, but it doesn't work properly. So um, I had two drives with two separate faults, and I was able to swap things over to make it so that one drive now has no faults, and this one now has two faults. So uh, I'm hoping that maybe a recap will fix those two faults, but who knows. Um so, um, okay, I've got to go back and, oh, geez, I'm, oh, look at all this. Um, it's bliss, yeah, that's right, okay, special compared to this minor jump, yep, 125, okay, system, four rules, yeah, well, actually, it's a real, this is an interesting thing, many, many, many years ago, I used to own a Macintosh 2, the original Macintosh 2, you know, the first of the modular Macs. And uh, it had been upgraded so that it had the ROMs that allowed you to put a high-density disk drive in it. And I think you could put more RAM in them as well with the ROM upgrade. Um, and I used to run, would have been 608 or something like that on it. And it was always, you know, worked fine. I played games on it, played Civilization or whatever the case may be. And uh, one day I found the original system disks that work on it. And it was System 5 or something like that. And I put that on, and exactly the same thing happened. All of a sudden, that thing absolutely flew. It came. I put, as soon as I got System 5 in there, it's like everything was just so quick and responsive. And again, it just comes down to the software that was that it was made for. Um, uh, system 7 will probably let you run more interesting software. But system 6 is the speed demon. Yeah, that's right. And I guess, you know, I mean, it depends on what you want to do with it. And I think even under System 6, I think you can still run things like Quark, old versions of Quark Express and stuff like that. So you can actually do stuff. Uh, might need to go through some... Uh, we, I mean, I'm eyeing a bit whether on System 6 or 7.1, mine limited. Can I tell you, Oz Retrocom, if you're talking about a Mac Plus, run System 6 or 701. Definitely don't run 7.1. It is a dog. Um, so there's just my two cents. 
Um, uh, okay. Let me go through some of <laughs> yep, yep, cool. Uh, just use different drafts rooms again. Another guy this. If you're using SCSI to SD, you can. Uh, the the SCSI you've seen the wish list. Yep, SCSI to SD. I've actually just sold one the other day. I've got to go up and set it up. Um, when I sell SCSI to SD drives, I actually put systems on them for the customers. So they say, hey, this is going into an SE30. Can you please put a system on there for an SE30? And I go in and I set up a system and I chuck on a couple of applications and stuff like that so that they're ready to just drop it into the machine. They don't need to do any setup or firmware updates or formatting or anything like that. Um, so, and I had one left in stock and I just sold my last one. The next ones I know will cost more because of the state of the Australian dollar, but that's another story. Uh, the most usable compact Max ever, especially with PDS upgrades added. Yeah. I uh, SE SE30, you know, I mean, I've got an SE30, and I would gladly own more. I can only use one at a time, but for whatever reason, I just want more. Uh, great, great um, sort of uh, computer. I mean, the the powerhouse of the um, of those original compact Macs. Um, when you um, when you compare them even to some of the computers that superseded them, I mentioned this in my other stream the other day that you basically take an SE30. Uh, and then the computer that kind of came after it was the Classic 2. And the Classic 2 was like 30% slower than it and only had a maximum of 10 megabytes of RAM. Ugh, no. Um, all right, so all of these caps are off. All of the pads are cleaned. Now it's time to put new ones on. This is where the cheat sheet comes in. Uh, Recappermac.com.au. Jump onto the resources menu and then select... Um, Color Classic, and you'll be able to get the uh, PDF or JPEG of this image here with all the caps. And I'm pretty sure the Color Classic has actually got links to where you can buy them on Mouser. Mouser, I think. Uh, it could be DigiKey. I'm not sure. One of the two. Um, right. So, uh, what are we up to now? We're up to putting new caps on. I've got my new capacitors down here, my little container of capacitors. And with this one, we're going to have one. 10 microfarad 16, two 100 microfarad 6.3, and six 47 microfarad 16. As usual, what I do is I put the the ones, the fewer amounts of capacitors on first. We've only got one 10 microfarad 16 volt, so I'll grab that. It just makes it easier. Uh, 10 microfarad 16 volt, let's grab one of those. I use uh, Kemet capacitors here. Um, and that one I think goes right right here underneath the um, socket for the uh, floating point unit. Let's remember how to talk. Okay. If I find the right SE30 at the right price, yeah, the Classic 2 seems like a bit of a dud in comparison to the SE30, although I if I saw a Classic 2 at a garage sale for $50, I'd still grab it. Yeah, I mean, the main problem with the Classic 2 is you're going to have to recap the logic board and the analog board. Um, they don't have that PDS slot that the SE30 had, which is always annoying, um, which is, of course, that other thing with uh, Ethernet network and stuff like that. Um, there's a little capacitor I've mentioned before, the numbers on the top. 106, it's 10 followed by six zeros. So it's essentially one with seven zeros after it. And that is the measurement in picofarads. And then if you go in and convert that into microfarads, it will give you the value of 10. All right. So let's hold that there nice and still, nice and straight. Got the little stripe on the positive side, unlike the electrolytic capacitors that have the stripe on the negative side. That was made up by some crazy nerd somewhere that wanted to confuse us. And just get a nice little mound of solder there and then give it a little tap on the side to see that that has actually adhered. Um, and flip over again. And put that down. And have I got enough solder left on my tip? Yes, I do. And that's looking good. I like it. 
I like it. Danny, welcome to the stream. Um, if you were here before and said hello and I missed it, I'm sorry, but I see it now. Uh, SC30 is its fan. Perhaps it's possible to swap over with a quieter one. Yes, absolutely. And a lot of people are doing that. I mean, apart from everything else, the fans in those things are tending to fail as they get old. I think I might even have one floating around here. But um, uh, yes, you, there are plenty of people that are replacing those old fans with quieter ones. Um, I mean, look, I can understand the complaint, but can I tell you from taking the step up from the 128K, 512K and plus to the SE and the SE30, at least they had a fan. Um, the old Mac Plus, you know, had all sorts of overheating problems. Um, so, uh, so yeah, um, welcome the fan. Yes, I totally get the noise, but you can replace it with a quieter one. And it's like lots of people are doing that. Um, SE... Capping an old Mac and wanted a video to take a look at to ensure I'm doing the right thing and found your stream. Talk about good timing. Well, thank you very much for joining, Mam693. The one thing I would say is that if you have a look on my channel, um, you know, uh, there is in the featured videos of my main channel page, there is uh, a sort of more complete pre recorded guide on recapping. And then I've actually got processes of uh, recapping different computers, things like SE30s, Color Classics, that sort of things, the popular ones. The most popular ones I get to recap are generally SE30s and Color Classics, and then probably following in that, the LC575 is probably close behind that. But um, by all means, I will go through and try and explain. So I do skip some things with the explanation sometimes when I'm doing the live streams, but I will try and explain as much as I can. Um, initially, I have taken the old capacitors off. In this instance, they were... Um, it had already been recapped by the customer and um, I didn't like the caps they use, so I have taken them off. The, the very, the really important part, which I've just been through, is the cleaning of these pads. Your pads should look bright and shiny and clean as you see there. They should look like brand spanking new ones. If your pads are not clean, you'll have trouble getting the new caps on. Okay, so next thing we need to do is put a couple of 6.3 100 microfarad caps on here so let me just grab those one and two two come on come on there we go Got them. now again people who have watched my streams before should be aware that i have capacitor fairies they wander around in this place when i'm not looking and steal capacitors from me when i get them out when i put them on the desk when i go to grab them later on and they're gone that's the capacitor fairies. So if you see them, let me know. Um, okay, so these ones look all good to go. Um, I, when I say they look good to go, I'm going to explain a little later on what I mean by that. Uh, but these are obviously clean and ready to go. I'm going to put these new caps on. They both have the positive face into the middle. See those two little pluses there? So I'm going to drop one there and drop one there. And we can tell these are 100 microfarad because, as I mentioned before, with the numbering there, this is 100. Sorry, this is 10 with seven zeros after it, 107. So that means it's eight zeros, and that means it is one with eight zeros after it. Picofarads, which is 100 microfarads. So there you go. Uh, oh, someone's cooking pies or something. Yum. Oh, I'm hungry. Um... Grab some. I've got flux here. I've now got solder on the tip of my iron. And um, the flux will help that solder flow off my iron and onto this pad and component. I'm just going to do a gentle little swipe there. And then that's, that's done. Push it down to make sure it's nice and secure. And we've got our nice little solder joint there. I mean, it's you know, nice if I do say so myself. Okay, let's go and do the other side. Um, as I have mentioned, again, I'm going to go be going through a lot of stuff that I've mentioned before because that's just what I do. When I am soldering capacitors on, if there is one side of the capacitor that is easy access and one side that is difficult access, I always do the easy side first and then the difficult side second. And that's because um, the easy side for when you're getting, trying to get the capacitor all lined up and straight and then use the difficult side once the capacitor is 
already secured on one side. It just makes it so much easier. So now I've just got to go and put a little bit of solder down the middle of these two. Um, grab a bit of solder. Incidentally, every time I go in and I grab a little bit of solder, I'm not necessarily showing it, but this is what I'm doing. I put my little bit of solder here. I grab my soldering iron and I chop a bit of it off like that. And then that just gives me the amount that I want on there. And, and then I focus. Uh, focus. All right. See, I'm busy working now. I'm not. I'm not reading chat, so I could be missing absolute chat gold. Uh, I made a pizza pie. Um, incidentally, we don't call them pizza pies here. We just call them pizzas. The concept of a pie, pizza pie, just never gets said here at all. Um, okay. Okay. Infecting with those two Bruce and the ones that steal tweezers too, yeah. Oh yeah, the the fairies come into the workshop and steal all sorts of things. Um okay. Uh I have pies, thank you for reminding me. Oh yeah, look after you like a gold pie, I tell you. Uh that's a flux capacitor. Hey, hey. Um, okay, uh, Mac Plus in perfect condition, works flawlessly with System 6, but has one megabyte of RAM. Uh, I want to upgrade to four, but scared to death of breaking or touching CRT once it's open. Um, one thing I will say about the Plus is that there's quite a bit of room inside it, so they're not too bad. Jump onto my channel, have a look at discharging a CRT in a vintage Mac. It's in my featured videos, and in that I think I actually discharge a Mac Plus from memory. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is a Mac Plus. And I basically go through the process of doing the discharge safely and then trying to be fairly cautious while inside the computer. I've also got a really old Mac Plus teardown video that I did like seven years ago or something like that. I don't think it's in the featured. You might have to go very way down into my videos. It might be in the featured. I'm not sure. It's, a, I've, it's had, I don't know, 30,000 views or something like that. And I basically just pull a Mac Plus completely apart. Um, no, I don't actually do a RAM upgrade, but the uh, the obvious, the important thing with the Mac Plus when you do an upgrade is you do need to cut a resistor on the logic board in order to do the upgrade. I've got one here actually, just here. That's the SE. This is a plus. So just going to jump across here very quickly. Uh, you know, I, I get so easily. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, my quick keys aren't working. Uh oh. Um, I don't know why my cookies aren't working, but they're not. All right, so let's just have a quick look at this Mac Plus board. I'm um, just, just sort of distracted here. Um, just a little quick sidetrack here for Umut Mert. Umut? 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 Not sure. Um, and this is a Mac Plus board here. And that's obviously where the RAM goes. Uh, you, obviously, when you uh, pull the computer apart, you've got to very, very carefully unplug this cable here and you need to unplug the floppy drive cable here and then once that's unplugged the board just slides out um, that's the CPU there now here her, her, right higher are the resistors you need to I'm just gonna see if I can get this no oh. you need to cut so this has already been cut you can see this 256 K bit if, if you've only got one megabyte in there chances are you have four 256K SIMs. So when you take the four 256Ks out and you put in four ones, you need to cut that resistor and then just make bend it up so it's not making contact. And then that way this will recognize one megabyte SIMs rather than 256K SIMs, and then you can take it up to four. Now, you didn't ask for that information. You may not have even needed it, but I told you anyway, because that's what I do. Okay, so... Um, Oh, you would have uh, to kill those. I forget. Simple margarita. Oh, margarita. Yeah. Just stick a bit of pepperoni on that and then it'll be perfect for me. Um, let's go. <laughs> Time travel. Uh, I'm drinking game. Take a shot whenever Bruce mentions capacitor fairies. So, so he's hungry. <laughs> yes. Okay. Or a bird's. Yes. Okay. Well, keep an ear out for the birds. I tend not to notice them. People bring them to my attention in the chat, but I tend not to notice the birds because. There's, they're just here all the time. Um, 
Like, oh, you could if you have a drink every time I say um, you're going to be drunk in minutes. Do, do, do. The rest of us are sensible. Ha, ha, ha. That's good to know. We're classic Mac owners. We all tam- time travel regularly. Indeed. Uh, I've seen the Mac Plus teardown. Very educational. It's very long. It's a long time before I actually st- decided to start doing kind of educational um, the streams. I just did that as a little bit of fun all that all, the, all those years ago. Um, I did started doing one with an SE30 when I got it as well, but then a capacitor fell off partway through me filming it. And that's what started me into the recapping. So how about that? Um, okay. Uh, uh, Umut, 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 you are most welcome. I think it's probably Umut. I could be wrong though. Um, okay. A bunch of people are having some American fish and chip jam in the whole pizza. Bye. I can imagine a pizza pie here being some bone <laughs> fish and chip. Uh, yeah, okay, I can understand that. Uh, plus, sorry, it's 2.5 minutes, so that part's been done. Good. By the way, you pronounce the name good. Oh, thank you. Uh, toppings defeats the purpose of a margarita. It does. It does. I mean, at the moment you actually put a pepperoni on it, it becomes a pepperoni pizza and not a margarita. But I'm just saying, you are just with a margarita, you are just one step away. From being my favourite pizza, so, um, so I have stopped, haven't I? I stopped, and I got to keep going here, otherwise we'll be here forever, and it'll turn into a Mac eighty four stream. Um, if you're one of these people that's just sort of likes to watch streams while you're working or something like that, jump on and have a look. Oh, Mike, thank you very much for that. I I came up with this idea. I, I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to do it. I, I was thinking, you know, I was talking about this idea of when I get a, um, um, uh, a, a a super chat, I need to do something like the EEP. Steve does the EEP. I can't do the EEP because that's Steve's thing. And I was trying to think of things that I could do and maybe something that was a little bit Australian. And I thought if every time someone gives me a super chat, I give you the name of uh, a strange Australian town. How about that? Um, so seeing as that's a, a big super chat, I thank you very much, Mike. I'm going to give you a couple. Any Australians would know these places, but for people outside of Australia, they probably don't. Uh, we'll start up in the A's, shall we? Anaminibi, there's one. Um, some of the ones that start with G are just glorious. Yeah, what do we got here? Got uh, Jeremunga, uh, uh, Jerobombara, um, Edamoga. Uh, uh, and let's see if we can find another one. Widgie Mulfa. There we go. So I've just given you a few little uh, um, names of Australian towns there as a thank you for uh, the live stream. Thank you, Mike. And of course, don't forget to visit Mike's channel. He's doing a giveaway. So come on, people, jump on there, subscribe, and you can win. Something. A laptop. Win a laptop. Maybe? Why maybe? Oh, I see. You might. You have a chance of winning a laptop. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, all right. So where are we? Sort of pictures making me hungry. Yes, I can understand that. Um, there we go. Right. Yeah, don't waste them all. Don't worry. There are lots more. <laughs> Uh, give us a crocodile Dundee impression. I don't know. I don't really probably do that very well. Um, you know, uh, when he just sort of does just like your average sort of, you know, g'day, mate, Aussie Bogan. How's it going? All right. Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, good, thanks. Um, now, one of the things I really want to do to this particular... Oh, my quick keys aren't working. How upsetting. No, for whatever reason, my quick keys aren't working anymore. Maybe my keyboard's come disconnected or something. So I'm going to have to go back to the old-fashioned way. Um, we have a town here in Canada called Dildo. Well, crikey. Um, yeah, three towns. Barry, Neville and Warren. <laughs> uh, so we see here we have uh, a very exposed trace. And what always worries me is when I put a capacitor down onto that, whether some solder might leak across onto that exposed trace. So what I usually like to try and do with those is I like to try and mask them off with some UV solder mask. Um, the biggest problem I have, of course, is doing that during a live stream because solder mask takes time to dry. So I'm just giving this a bit of a wipe with a, 
a tissue. And I'm going to grab my UV solar mask, which I saw just a little while ago. Here it is. I have it in a little metal tin type thing to keep it uh, keep it not drying accidentally. Um, okay, so oh, we've got, we've got lots going here. Who's got drunken named towns after themselves? Yes, it does, doesn't it? There's uh, a Bogan Shire in New South Wales. How about that? A town in Pennsylvania called Intercourse. Wow. This is turning into into a, a naughty stream. I, I might end up, you know, getting an R rating on this one. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, that a lot of the place names that I've been mentioning are ones that are uh, Aboriginal words, um, words, you know, names from the indigenous people, and. Uh, uh, and that's where names like, you know, Wollongong or Woolloomooloo, that sort of thing come from. I've really laid this on thick, haven't I? Look at it. <sighs> now, there are generally two ways that I can dry this. The first is with a UV lamp. The second is with the sun. But unfortunately, it is really overcast outside today, so the sun's not going to be a very good option for me. So we just have to hope that I can get this dried. I've got my little, that's my UV lamp here. Don't look into the light. Um, okay. One place where we can make together. <laughs> I'm not going to see. Um, wagga Wagga. Yes, good old Wagga Wagga. Um, okay. Place they loved it so much they named it twice. <laughs> Um, right, let me continue with the recapping because that's what we're here for. So what I might do is I might just do this, set this over here with the UV lamp, if I can, can I fit, can I do both at the same time? And I'll recap this one at the same time, and then I'll recap here. So all of the rest of the caps now are 47 microfarad, 16 volt. Thankfully with this particular computer, there aren't too many. We have one, two, three. Four, five, six in total, and three, of course, in a row. So I'm just going to grab... Should I grab them one at a time, or should I grab a bunch? If I grab a bunch, I am just tempting the capacitor fairies, aren't I? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. We have a Walla Walla. Oh, wow, how about that? Walla Walla Bing Bang. Um, okay, so let's put this over here. Uh, Dumaresque, because it's almost impossible to pronounce without some sort of prior knowledge. Yeah, I, I have no idea how Dumaresque is pronounced, but I'm saying Dumaresque. Is it Dumaresque? I would have thought Dumaresque, but who knows? Um... Oh, a very nice looking shower head. That's good to know. That's that's something you can always use. Um, all right. Okay. All right. I'm just getting so sidetracked here. This recapping is never going to get finished. Let's get the cap. I'm forgetting the process. Um, and we will put this. Look, at the, it's been so long since I put a... Bloody cap on the soldering iron had gone to sleep. Whew. Chris Isherwood, hello, welcome to the stream. We are recapping for a change. There's our nice little force first of the 47s going in place. And Here's the other side. Let's see if I can come at this at a really wonky angle like this. Yeah. Need a bit more solder. Come on. There we go. Neat. Neat. <coughs> so I should pronounce Dumeric. Okay, there you go. Got to be careful. Those locals. I'll get you if you say it wrong. Okay, this, these ones are okay. I can just put caps straight onto those. 
So let's just move around and do this. We're going to just try and get this happening. If that UV solder mask isn't dry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump on and have a quick look at the analog board while we're at it. Um, I don't think I've ever done a live stream of a Color Classic analog board. I've done a removal, but not a recapping. Um, now, I won't necessarily have time to recap the whole thing, but we'll at least pull it out and have a look. Um, but, you know, given the fact that he was saying he has some of these problems, I do want to have a look at it. I can't just like go, oh, yeah, no, I reckon it's fine. Uh, if someone comes to me and says, look, I have serious concerns about this analog board, whether they are right or wrong, I can't just assume it's okay. I've got to have a look at it. And Color Classic analog boards do get capacitor leakage on a couple of them in particular, and I'm going to point those out when I get the board out. Um, I've got a video on removing the analog board if you are ever wanting to do it. Um, it's not as daunting as it might actually sound. Um, you do need to observe all safety and discharging um, kind of procedures and all that because, you know, it is dangerous. Uh, they deal with very high voltages. You spin them around. Yeah, you get in big trouble if you mispronounce place names, you know, sort of around here. They immediately know you're not a local, and they'll treat you like garbage. Ah. Keep hearing birds in the stream and keep wondering why are there birds awake at 10 p.m.? Well, it's not 10 p.m., that's why. Um, so, uh, pronunciation. I absolutely love Bruce's American pronunciation impressions. Oh, thank you very much. Um, well, I go like Salder. No, solder. Solder instead of solder. Solder. And of course, every now and again, I just break into my very, very poor, lousy sort of southern accent, which is pretty shocking. But um, Bathurst. Yeah, so that was an interesting one. I remember um, there's a car that was made here uh, that had a little tagline of Bathurst on it. And it was because um, Bathurst is a place where we hold a car race here in Australia. And um, um, it was on Top Gear, they did a review of this particular car. It was the Holden Bathurst or whatever it was, you know. And um, uh, I'm pretty sure it was a variation of a Commodore or something like that. And they, um, and they, the whole way through the show, they kept calling it a Bathurst. And I was like, no, no, not Bathurst. Wrong. Now, I am going to actually, I was just going to say, if you have a look here, there's a little bit of the pad which is exposed. And like, I'd be like, ooh, I'm worried about that. I'm going to, uh, I might cause a short, but it's not going to matter because it's actually joined to what I'm going to solder onto. So it doesn't matter if a little bit of solder spills onto that. It won't cause any problem at all. But I am going to just clean it up a little bit with some, uh, what do you call that thing? Wick. Wickety whack. There we go. All right. So we can put a uh, component on this. There we go. Of course, the way uh, people actually pronounce Bathurst here, or well, certainly a lot of the people that come from it, or of people going to the races that are there, the car races that are there, it's uh, forget about the TH and just replace it with an F. We're going to Bathurst. Oops, not that one. This one. Got a Bathurst, man. Uh, Bathurst. Um... There's actually, um, there's a place down, I think it's still in New South Wales, but it's right close to the Victorian border. And there are two towns right next to each other. And uh, one is called Albury, and the other one is called Wodonga. And you pretty much, whenever you're referring to that place, you refer to both towns. No one sort of just says Albury. They generally refer to the two towns. So it's Albury, Wodonga. 
Uh, I think that's a nice, interesting, interesting uh, sort of place name. Oh, hello. I've got a chicken come to say hello. How you doing? All right. Yeah, good, thanks. <clears throat> Most of my chickens are actually in a caged off area, but that particular chicken is still very young and small, and it's able to fly over the cage. When it gets older and fatter, it won't be able to anymore, but for the moment, that one is still able to pop in and say hello to me from time to time. Um, I really should have soldered the other side of that one while I had the board spun around. Here we go. Last one, and as I say, I want to dry this UV solder mask before I uh, do any more work on it. So I'm going to just have a quick look outside, see if it's sunny enough for me to dry it in the sun. If not, I'll set it up with the globe, and then we'll have a little look at the analog board. And won't that be fun? Oh, yes, it will. Answer that before anyone has a chance to say otherwise. Um, let me just check. I'll be right back. I'm just going to check on the sun. Talk amongst yourselves. Lovely and sunny out there, actually. Nothing to complain about. Okay, so let's move that capacitor out of the way. Anyone? It's because the camera's going. That's why the fairy didn't come in. Right, so um, let's uh, move our UV light out of the way. I don't want to get a suntan. Um, and not Jeopardy music. But you've got to do Girl from Ipanema when there's waiting time. Uh, okay, let's jump across to... Key's not working. Let's jump across to the side angle, perhaps. Oopsie. Let's get the microscope out of the way. And let's remove a an analog board from this guy. I'm just going to grab some paper towel to plonk down on the bench here to protect the front of this. And the fan is just blowing it like crazy. Oh, just, uh. This is what I don't like about CRTs. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to take the back off. Might need to zoom out for that. I probably should point the camera up a little too. Be right back. Up we go. See more of the mess. More or less of the mess. Okay, now I need a tool. Here we are. This is the tool I need. Um, I I was would have loved to have been able to put a recommendation to this, in you know sort of a link to buy it, but I've found this from an Australian eBay seller, not an overseas one, and this is just the most awesome tool for opening these up. So T15, it's the same. Oh, you don't really need it for these because they 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 don't have the screws buried right down in the top like the old Compact Max do, but uh, nonetheless, they're quite good because they give you a decent amount of torque and all that sort of stuff when you're trying to remove the screws. But we're talking about a T15 screw. They are the same screws that you find in your 128K, 512K, Mac Plus, SE, SE30. Did I miss any? SE, FD, HD, Classic, Classic 2. Um, so, Apple sort of using T15 screws so that we wouldn't open them up ourselves, which of course wasn't great when you consider that a lot of those Macs had batteries inside them that needed to be changed. Okay, I have the Apple provider driver for those screws and it's very similar. It has a, does it have, it has a sort of a loopy thing on the top, doesn't it? It's a big wide handle rather than a sort of normal screwdriver handle like that. Okay, sorry I bumped the microphone off comes the top, comes the top, there we go, no signatures inside, but there is a fan, oh, let me just bang that on the light there, right, so, here 
is the analog board. This is the analog board there. Oh, this has been off before. I can tell because there's usually some little rubber stuff here holding this on, but it's gone. So this analog, well, certainly this has been off the back. I don't know if the analog board's been out, but that's it's definitely been off before. Uh, SE Super Drive, everyone misses that one. Yeah, I do miss that one. Sorry, I um, yeah, I'm not sure if I've even seen it. Um. It's a long handle, so two Apple CRT discharge from when I did Apple Surfs in the 90s. Ah, there you go. So, this is a particular computer that has a bleeder resistor. And so, in theory, I should not need to discharge it. However, bleeder resistors can fail. So, in order for, to be safety, I am going to discharge this. Now, what do I always say about discharging? Disclaimer, very dangerous. Don't do it. But if you decide you want to do it anyway, I do have a video on my featured videos discharging a CRT and a compact Mac. So anyhow, let's just get this little guy in here and go okay, clickety clickety click, clickety click. No discharge there, nothing there, no voltage, no snap, no crackle, no pop. All good. So let's now take this anode cap off. Off you come. Thank you. Being rude. And we've got a whole bunch of things to do. Now, again, I have a video on removing this. There are lots of things that need to be done in a particular order, and it's very important you know what they all are. I'm not going to go into them in huge detail in this one, but we need to take this off. Uh, we need to take this off the back. There's usually rubber on here that has to be cut, but it has been removed already, as I mentioned. That comes off the back. That's, I think, all from this side. Let's spin them around. Oh. And we're going to undo this. This is what the microphone cable, I think, from the top. Um, we've got... Where's the... Where's the grounding wire? Where is the grounding wire? It's normally a grounding wire just there. You can actually see all the little marks. Well, you can't, but... Um, I might have to... Have a look at that. Um, just, just going in here, just there. There should be a grounding wire attached. Okay, we've got this little yoke cable that's got to come out. Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, there's the speaker cable down at the back here. It has to be undone. Um, that comes out with that. That's fine. I'm really confused by this grounding cable, grounding wire. It's uh, It's got to be in here somewhere, I assume. And then we're just going to slide this little guy out. I think I got everything. I mean, apart from the grounding wire, which is not there. Is that it? Ah, there it is. So that grounding wire wasn't even connected, which is, of course, not a good thing. That is meant to be attached there. So at some stage, someone put this together and didn't put this back on. Bad, bad thing. Okay, so this slides out, and then you can just lift it off like that. And there's our groovy looking analog board. As you can see, not too difficult. It's certainly not like pulling apart one of those great big CRTs that Jay did recently. I commend him for that. And I can actually see here an SS, a, a, a 5.1 SCSI to SD connected up there. And it is connected up, well, it's held on with a bit of electrical tape. Although, no real issue with that. I might end up uh, redoing that with a bit of, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, sort of with some standoffs and actually mount it on there properly. We'll see if I can, you know, mount it on there, find someone to mount it. I, I, in my SCSI to SD video, if anyone has not watched it, feel free to jump on and have a look. Oh, hello. Chooks, come say hello. She could get in the camera any minute now. Um, by the way, Chook is Australian for chicken, just in case anyone wasn't aware. Okay, so let's now get this guy out of the way. Oh no, look at the board, these are heavy. And we'll have a little bit of a closer inspection. Don't break anything, please. If the stream suddenly goes wrong, we'll blame the chicken, shall we? Okay, bye. 
something caught her attention, so she's off. Oh, okay. Let's have a look and check the uh, uh, leaders and flyback transformers. Do any of you gentlemen know of a replacement flyback source? Black and white compact max. They are cheaper than US standard dollars. Custom price. Grounding wire should be attached to the braided metal strap. Yes, that's right. Um, okay, so uh, JDW, no, no. Uh, if you find one, please share it. Um, no, I guess the one advantage is that those flybacks, uh, on the, certainly the, the later ones, the plus ones, the little tiny flyback that was on the original 128k, the thin one, they do have a fairly high failure rate, but the ones on the pluses and, and, and SEs and that, I have generally not had any of them go bad. I know they do, but I haven't had any of them go bad, so I haven't had to find any. I think I've even got a a spare on an old analog board i've got a couple of spares on a couple of old analog boards here if i do need them but uh but yeah in terms of finding a new one no um no um but if anyone does have a supply source for those it would be great um foul play oh oz retrocomp welcome to the dad joke parade wow we Cheese and crackers. Um, okay. Um, we did an old Mac. Uh, just a quick resold of the RGB leads under the shield near the center. Uh, okay. All right. I'm just going to have a quick little talk about some of the problems that you do encounter with these analog boards, the things that you do generally need to be sorted out. These caps here have a high tendency to leak. These, common, these ones here. So, you know, they are ones that, I would typically own replace, but I'll tell you another one, which is a shocker, is this guy here. It's a little flat one. It's a little squishy downy one. It's like 3,300 or something like that. Um, and I can't see it. I can't see it. Um, they have a tendency to leak as well. So they're, it's generally not a bad idea to replace those. Um, I'm going to take off this little metal shield from the bottom. Um, I'm, once again, I'm not the first person here, um, because we've got indication of other people being here and doing what I'm doing here. So uh, I don't know what they did. That's the that's the part that I don't like. Um, but we just want to take this little shield off here. It's sort of there. We go that way. Um, it's pretty dusty in here. Um, you can see all that dust. I mean, obviously, I'm going to clean that out, but that's a sign that someone's never taken that shield off. Well, certainly not in a long time. Um, and a lot of dust around here. But what I'm sort of looking for is any signs of uh, any corrosion coming through onto the other side of the board, any leakage. Um, I'm not really, where's this one? Um, I say there's dust, but not a lot of Gunge or scunge by the looks of it. They generally get a lot of uh, impact from heat. Um, the areas that get kind of really hot are around here. So these little stack of resistors in here, they all get really, really hot. So you can often have signs of, um, of heat there. But, oh, and a couple of diodes down in here as well, they get hot too. But that is quite normal. Um, but, um, look, I, analog board should probably be recapped. Um, what time did I start streaming? Uh, like 10.30. So um, I don't know if there's necessarily time for me to re do the recapping on this one here because there are quite a few caps here that I replace. I don't replace all of them. I generally re replace... Um, Oh, I don't have the guide, but I generally replace this little cluster down here, which you can't see because of the way I've got it. I generally replace this little cluster here, and I replace uh, a couple from in here that are the same rating, and this little squishy down flat guy here. Um, okay, so I am faced with a conundrum here. Um, I think given the time that we are at at the moment, I am probably going to 
just put this back together for now. I think I will end up recapping it. I may not do that in this stream because, uh, as I say, because of for time reasons. Um, but uh, I, um, I do want to get that logic board back into that computer and fire it up and see if she actually starts up. Uh, there may still be problems with it. Um, and as I mentioned before, it is still really dirty. So it needs a proper clean in the ultrasonic. So even after that recapping, I have a fairly high expectation or low expectation, I guess, of it, uh, of it um, working or a high expectation of it not working um, or still having problems because it's still got all of that ultrasonic, uh, all of that uh, electrolyte gunge on it. Um, so um, I will put this back together. I'll put the computer back together. I'll get the board finished, recap. We'll fire it up. We'll give it a try, see how it goes. And then I think I'll probably pull this out and recap it a little bit later on. There is a possibility that I will be doing another stream this weekend, either later today, obviously not good for my US friends who are probably going to be asleep at the time, or maybe tomorrow because I have got a mountain of recapping work here at the moment. Um, so um, I'm just going to have to work my way through it. And then with those, I'll be making a decision as to what I uh, live stream and what I don't. So... Um, just having a quick look here. Um, so, all right, I'll do what I said. I'll go connect this back up. I'll put everything back where they should be rather than this uh, grounding, this little ground strap just floating around where it's not meant to be. Um, so we'll just do that now. And then I will, the UV solder mask will be dry by now because it's been sitting in the sun. Oof, oof. I had hoped to recap this as well. But I, um, there are a couple of things wrong with me just continuing and keeping on going and just doing all this nonstop. The first is that um, I have a, uh, a prior engagement uh, a, li a little bit later today. Uh, that I, means that I would have to stop this stream anyway. And the other is that I really did go on a long time with the recapping of the logic board. And why? Because I prattle. That's why. I prattle and prattle and prattle. And I just talk about nonsense continually. Um, and for that, I apologize. All right. Okay. All right. Time for the analog board to go back in. Oh, thank you very much for uh, saying that, that guy, Chad. Enjoy your dinner. Um, I hope it is tasty. Um, it's heading towards lunchtime for me. And I'll tell you what, I am a little bit on the hungry side. So... I have to lift this thing up again, don't I? Don't I? Actually, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to lift it up yet. I'm going to do the finish of the recapping here. Uh, so I'll be right back when I, I'll grab that board from out in the sun. It won't be a second. Just remember, girl from Ipanema. Well, the clouds rolled in, but did they roll in a long time ago or a little while ago? Will this UV solder mask be dry? These are the questions that you will only get the answers to on this exclusive stream. Uh, and we go to microscope. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, look at that. That looks lovely and dry. Uh, you can see it's sort of got a bit of a matte finish now rather than being shiny, and I'll just... Push it with a smudger. Lovely. Okay, so let's get that last cap on. And then we can consider this board recapped. Great, eh? Where would you rather be? Huh? Huh? Tell me that. Need to live stream Australian cuisine. Ah, yeah. yeah. Uh, look, don't get me wrong. Um, there are some absolutely fantastic sort of chefs and eateries out here. Um, but in terms of Australian cuisine, most of what you'll find out here is what we refer to as 
kind of modern Oz, uh, which is usually just a fusion of lots of different uh, cultures of food. Um, so, you know, maybe a little bit of sort of Asian influence and maybe a little bit of Italian influence or a bit of Greek influence, um, a bit of Indian influence. Uh, but in terms of actual Australian cuisine, we don't really have anything that I could say, oh, well, yeah, that's uh, that's exclusively ours. That's, uh, you know, it's not like a souffle or something like that. And I mean, uh, in Australia, we're sort of generally known for meat pies. But we do do better stuff than that. Okay, so there's the last cap being put on. As I was thinking of the Barbie. Oh, yes. Good old... Uh, Cooking, cooking on the Barbie. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I love a good Barbie. I mean, I'm not a huge steak eater, and that's typically what people would be cooking on the Barbie out here. They'll just about grab a great big steak. I'm more likely to put a bit of lamb on there, which of course is very Australian because Australians do um, have absolutely fantastic lamb. We we breed really good lamb out here. I was going to say make make. You don't make lamb, do you? You um, kill an animal for it. Um, but, uh, and, uh, you know, maybe some chicken, um, shh, shh, don't let the chickens out there know that I eat chicken. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, love a good Barbie. I can tell you that that's for sure. Okay. So always with the re when I do a recapping, I always check to make sure I've got the right caps in the right place. I check to make sure they're soldered down. I check to make sure that the polarity is correct. Uh, remember that if you recap something and it doesn't work afterwards, Always check your own work first. It's usually the most likely cause of the failure. And don't take any offense by that. It's just how it is. I've checked my own stuff here and I've been doing recapping for a long time now. And think, think, there we go. That's looking good. That one looks a little crooked, doesn't it? Hey, what's going on? Can't be having crooked. Just going to show you how I do a an on the fly uncrooked. go just straighten it up a smidge and then I just do the other side just in case there's any built up pressure there from me bending it okay so there we go that's not crooked anymore it's now nice and straight so everyone is happy now there is one thing that I'm going to do with this before I fire it up and that is I'm going to hit this with a little bit of uh, um, uh, what do you call that stuff isopropyl alcohol or even maybe some flux cleaner so uh, let's just do another little bit of a zoom here and we're zooming into, zooming into, uh, we're right back here. Can I see it? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this is the guy here, and this is my flux cleaner, which I buy in a bottle from my chemical supplier. I, um, it's, it's a necessary thing with this you always end up with all sorts of horrible chemicals when you're doing this stuff so i'm just going to give that a little bit of a scrub hope it breaks down any of that electrolyte and moves it out of the way uh, it is really common for this sound chip to get broken uh, little broken traces in particular like under it and around it so if i still am not getting sound after doing this that will be my main suspicion and i would usually end up taking this off cleaning all the pads under it and putting it back on again um, <laughs> kangaroo. Yes, having said that, kangaroo and emu is something that's still relatively recently on the menu. I think the time they made the coat of arms, I don't think people were actually eating kangaroo and emu. Um, pavs, we do pavs. Yes, having said that with the pavs, don't the New Zealanders, all cl Zealanders claim that they invented the pav? I mean, we do lovely pavlovas, don't get me wrong. I love a pavlova. <sighs> Yummy. Uh, even Vegemite is borrowed from elsewhere. Marmite, this is very, very true. Um, subject, okay. yeah, all right, so that's I've just cleaned that up a little bit. I'm going to just have a quick look at it in the microscope and just see if it how it looks now. And this one, okay, I've definitely cleaned some of that gunk off. You can see that gunk is, has been cleaned a little, it's not. You know, it's not perfect, but it's all right. <sighs> Where's Jay? He's always telling us to stream, and then look, he's disappeared. Is he playing darts? 
Can't flame darts again. Can't go around telling people they need to stream and then disappear. So all I'm doing at the moment is just cleaning that uh, that fluid off. And even though I don't think it is actually conductive, um, I I just don't want it on there when I try try this out. So. I'm just using a bit of hot air to just sort of clean all that stuff out. This will, of course, be cleaned properly in the ultrasonic cleaner, but this is just for us to do our little testing. So, here it is in all its glory. All recapped. Let's just move up here a little bit with the camera. Let's go on the other side of the microphone. Um, so, uh, you can see we've now got these nice little surface mount tantalums here instead of those sticky uppy um, uh, through hole capacitors so you know that's uh, that's what we want we want that at all to look nice and everything like that so let's whack some RAM into it this does have some RAM on board but um, it is it is a possibility that if this boots it'll boot into a system that maybe needs more RAM that is on on this board so I will just put the RAM that um, that the customer included with it I, I don't know what size these are um off the top of my head but like you know it's something you can look up but yeah i don't know yeah only turning on what it feels like well it's interesting you say that steve because that is apparently one of the symptoms of this particular computer that turns only turns on when it feels like it um what are they Oh, they're mine. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> always just double, triple checking. So let's get this board out of the way now, and we will do the analog board go back in. Oh, far out. Off comes the back. Being as careful as I can. I just want to point out that when I do this stuff not on live stream, I'm way more careful. It's just um, when I do this stuff on live stream, I'm sort of trying to keep things moving fairly pacily, and uh, the next thing you know, I'm whacking things everywhere. But thankfully, not doing any any damage. Okay, so analog board slide in, and I'll just put that into its little slots there. Incidentally, I did one of these. This thing here uh, is actually it's called a horizontal deflection transistor from memory, and uh, I did one of these recently where that was shot. Um, so just letting you know that is another thing that can fail on these. Um, okay, we're going to just connect everything up again now. Let's go a bit too more wide. We're going to connect up the microphone. We are going to connect up the anode cap come on in you go there we go anode cap this is the little yoke cable and that's no yoke <laughs> uh, this is the ground cable that wasn't connected that should have been connected and that connects to this little metal thingy there maybe you want to call that I think someone called it a harness before I'm happy to say that Harness. Then this goes on the back as carefully as possible. Try and push it on straight, not bending it or twisting, because we all, we all know the dangers associated with uh, uh, these, uh, you know, little glass bits at the end here. Very easy to break. Uh, I've got my little degorse cable here, which is going to connect up there, and I've got my speaker cable here. We're going to connect up there. Obviously, you need to connect to the speaker so we can see whether the sound works. Done. Shabang a bang. Okay. Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah. Let's just do another double check. We want to make sure everything is connected because if you've got something missing, it's not good. All right, that's good. I'm not going to put the case on the back. I'm just going to test this now um, without the case. Uh, so here's a chicken's back. Um, okay, here's our little logic board. We're going to slide in the back. Pull out if I've forgotten anything. <laughs> Slide that in place. Looking good. Hello. Oh, get my super grubby keyboard. 
get my legs all dirty again. I really should clean this keyboard. I mean, this is a genuine Apple one. Uh, it was stored rather badly for some of its life. Live a tough life. Right, so we've got a keyboard connected. It's all, everything's good and nice. Um, and as I said, I haven't given this board a proper clean, so it st could still be problems. But, you know, I'm feeling happier about the recapping, so let's just see what happens with this. Going to connect up some juice. And I'm going to fire it up. Let's hear the old degors. Boom. <clears throat> Nothing smoking. It's good. Uh, no untoward sounds. So that's all good. Okay. Ready? And... It chimed. It's quiet, but it chimed. Um, so that's a good sign. I like a chime. And here comes the screen. And that did a flicker. <laughs> that little line's gone. So we were talking about that little line. Now you wouldn't... Oh, no, it's not. Hang on, let me put my glasses on again. I can't see. I, I, the reason why I couldn't see it is because I don't have my little... Yeah, the line's still there. Ooh, it made an interesting noise. Now, I should just do this because this is actually my customs computer. I need to make sure they don't have anything personal on there. No, they don't. Protect the identity. Uh, let's go here to control panels. And let's have a look at... I think this needs the um, desktop rebuild. What do you reckon? Uh, let's go to sound. Sound. I will need to get mine and have a look and see if it has a line in the same place. Uh, but it doesn't... It's so thin, it doesn't look like it's a fault like on the analog board or something like that. Let's turn the volume up, shall we? There you go, Steve. There's your EEP. I still feel like it's a little bit quiet, but I've got a feeling we can probably resolve that with the cleaning, but, you know. There we go. I don't know if you guys can hear that. The speaker's over there, the microphone's there. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Um, the line is totally normal. Thank you, Mr. Fahrenheit. I've never noticed it which I guess is probably because my eyes aren't that too, that crash up. But um, but it was just this person said, oh, there's a horizontal line. Now, obviously, I've got one of these. I can go up and have a close look. If I see that little line there in the same place as we talked about before, the idea of it just being a Trinitron line or something like that, I'm quite happy to go back to them and say, you know what, that little line is normal. If you have anything outside of that, it might need to be fixed. But um, Okay, so it certainly started. That's the main thing, um, I, which is always good. I mean, I don't always get that with my videos. <laughs> Um, I was going to shut it down and we'll try and switch it on again. Um, and I didn't get a chime that time. So we, we, this is, this is like one of yours, Steve. This is one of these ones that starts when it wants to and doesn't another time. No green light on the power. Uh, okay, so um, da -da -da, bears, not a normal, quiet, it quietly bombed. Yeah, moving around the line to turn on the place of two. Yes, I remember the Trinitron lines at the time. I remember it back in the day. Back in the day, uh, there was something that were talked about all the time. Um, uh, right, two thirds down the screen. Yeah, that, I mean, that's where this one is about there. Uh, so we can't click the Trinitron. CC, yes, it is. You know, uh, if I was right, but if I let it sit for a few days to start, it has no sound through the speakers, but it's loud and clear through the headphones. I expect the analog board needs re recaps. Yeah, so obviously, I, you know, the, the next step for me on this is to recap the analog board. I am going to do that and say I'm not going to do that on a live stream. I, I did want to, but I've taken up way too much time at the beginning doing other stuff, and I do need to eat something. Um, 
I do intend to be doing a few more streams, possibly either much later today or maybe tomorrow, because I do have so much recapping to do. Um, the um, let's go and switch it off and on again, and see if we can get it to do it. Um, we do know that it does work sometimes, but again, not quite there. Uh, I can't really do the cleaning on the live stream. It has to sit in the ultrasonic and make a horrible, horrible noise. And I need to rinse it and dry it. It takes time. So I can't really do that in this stream. But as usual, with all of my streams, I, I do follow-ups of what's been going on, either on my next stream or on my Facebook page. Um, so uh, so for the moment, um, you know, we've at least got the board looking a lot tidier in terms of the... Um, this doesn't have a battery in it. I remember someone telling me once that these things don't start up reliably if they don't have a PRAM battery in them. I don't know if that is the case. I mean, you know, but um, I don't have one down here. I had one the other day and I put it in the computer, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, Steve's. I, you don't even get this. Do you get the screen come up on yours, Steve, or is it just completely dead? For, I, for my recollection, is that when yours doesn't start up, it does nothing. It either does nothing or it boots. Oh, hello. Just, you want to come and say hello to the people? There we go. Oh, nope. Come and say hello to the people. No. You stay on the hand. Stay on the hand. I don't know why I'm talking to it. I can't hear me. Don't you hop onto the stuff from high voltage. So this is the this is the chicken uh, that has been sort of uh, hopping into the uh, the room from time to time, and uh, so I just so that you know that I'm not just pretending that there's a chicken. There is actually a chicken, and there's the chicken. So hello, hello. Uh, this is a quick little chicken cameo, and then the chicken goes home. Well, goes away, or not. When she wants to go that way, I want you to go that way. Please go that way. Come on. They're very stubborn animals. What's her name? Her name is. She's got a. She's got a funny name actually. We call her uh, Bernadette, and the reason why we call her that is. We actually found her um, uh, on one of our morning walks as we walked past a school called St. Bernadette's, and so we just called her Bernadette. Um, and, uh, yeah, so uh, she was just a little tiny little thing, and we were just walking past and saw her in this little park next to the school, and went, that's a chicken. Um, and because we already had chickens, we just thought, okay, well, we can give her a home. There you go. Um, right. <coughs> so, um <sighs> Sorry, I need to, uh, yeah. All right, okay, look, we at least did get it to start up. I know it's not working consistently, <coughs> which is a shame, um, but I do expect that I will be able to get it working consistently with a little bit of extra work. So that's coming, um, and I will keep people up to date. As I say, I will possibly be streaming again uh, this weekend. So I would like to thank everyone for joining. A special thank you out to Mike from Mike's Mac Chat for his super chat. <coughs> I do appreciate that. It is wonderful. It makes it feel all worthwhile. Um, thank you again to all the regulars that who have rocked up here today. Um, and um, I will uh, I will see you all again, hopefully, sometime soon. And, uh, yeah, have a good rest of day, night, whatever the case may be. So thanks again, and I will see you all later. Bye.